Welcome to Reach the World ASAP. My name is Pastor Scott Griswold, and I'm here with Fabian Reed, my friend from North Carolina. Now, you're Jamaican, and you're a teacher, and you're a father. I don't know a whole lot, because we haven't got to spend a lot of time together. But what I do know is I keep running into you at different places where you are with people from all kinds of backgrounds. Maybe it's because you're from Greensboro, but I think it's especially because you've had a heart for church planting among the nations that God has sent here. Can you just share with us a little bit about how you got into church planting, who you've been doing it with, and how God's been leading? Actually, there are many ways to, to, to start my, um, you know, to trace my, my beginning or my entry into church planting. But, you know, um, the book of Romans says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then it says, you know, how will they hear unless they have a preacher? You know, and how can they actually preach unless they are sent? And God actually sent me to the refugees. And this actually came through a dream that I, that I had. And it was very profound, very direct. And so I ventured into reaching refugees. Um, of course, I don't speak their languages. So it took a lot of um, skills and strategies to actually reach them. Wow. So the Lord specifically gave you a dream to be involved in church planting. And where did, where did you go from there? Yes, yeah, so it, it began one day I, ha I was at school and my students were having lunch. And I was having a conversation with two of my students. And they mentioned to me that they don't eat pork. And so I asked them why they didn't eat pork. And they said, because we are Seventh-day Adventists. And here are my students. And I didn't know that they were hmm. Seventh-day Adventists. And that same day, my wife and I actually visited their homes. And we, we began to visit them. And the whole thing just began to grow until we organized the group. And that was the that was the Karen group. Okay, so mm -hmm. these are these are students in your classroom who are Karen refugees who come to America. Yes, and you find that out, and you were able then to encourage them to. F so they had no worship group at the time. Uh, no, they didn't have any worship group, and actually there weren't any refugees in the, the, the there weren't any refugee groups anywhere nearby, um, and so one of the first things was to organize them they were you know just scattered sometimes they would worship in their homes um, you know but there wasn't any organization and there wasn't any plan for any organization and so that was what I had to to do to get in touch with the local churches you know to try to get a place for them to worship a time that they could worship and you know to to transport them to mm -hmm. um, church but you know it involves much more than that hmm. because we we had to interpret letters for them you know sometimes you visit their homes they didn't have um furniture or or hmm. things to eat with or even things to cook hmm. and you you go out and you you try to get these things for them you take them laundry you take them shopping um pretty much you were their go-to person for almost everything hmm. and at the time none of them could drive wow. so everywhere they wanted wow. to go they would call us you know um, can you take me here can you take me there so you're you're sharing you're caring you're reaching out to them and they form a worship group right there inside your church but you don't have the Korean language down right what are, what uh, are you doing no. to communicate so I at first I tried to identify somebody who is spiritual and who could speak um, enough English mm -hmm. um, that we could communicate and I tried to gauge you know using my teaching skills how much um, English they know mm -hmm. so if the person speaks at the sixth grade level I would speak sixth grade language mm -hmm. um, if it's at the third grade level I would speak third grade language mm -hmm. and so you know if you as you know someone who speaks English comes into one of the worship services and you hear me talking 
through the translator, sure. you would think, why is this guy talking <laughs> like they're all little children? Because you know what's going on. That's, yes, that's I excellent. I don't want the language, to, the, the message to be lost through the translator. So, so this group now, years later, has its own leadership. How many has it grown to? Yes, so when I left the group, um, you know, after having a, a leader, um, it was about 60 members mm -hmm. um, who were there. And I, the I left that group to start another group. This yeah. time among what people group? Um, actually, you know, the, the Karen were actually not the first group that I started. It was the Vietnamese that were the, the first group. Oh, wow. Those were the first group that I, I, that was the first group I started. But after the Vietnamese and the Karen, then I started the Nepalese. Now, I'm guessing yeah. you didn't find Seventh-day Adventist Christians among the Nepali ones. No, in fact, the, the Nepalese have never heard about the Sabbath, and they have never heard about the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And now, many of them never heard about Jesus, And right? many of them have never heard about Jesus. Primarily a Hindu-believing country. Yes, Hindus and Buddhists. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Fabian, you've reached out to the Vietnamese, the Korean, and then the Nepali-speaking uh, people from Nepal. Is that it? Uh, three is a lot. Um, but there's, you don't graduate from evangelism. Amen. And so the Lord uh, laid on my heart uh, to reach out to the Congolese. Actually, it, it came through a dream, and I didn't know they were Congolese. I had a dream about Africans, mm -hmm. and for two years I've been searching for the Africans. In fact, it was very interesting. I went to one um, one workshop, and I saw some Africans, and I walked straight over to them, and I asked them, you know, I, I tried to ask them some questions to gauge, are these the Africans that I should have met, you know, to start the work? And it so happened that those Africans that I met at the time, we started the, the Congolese group, and they are the ones now leading the group. Wow, praise God. He really you know, is led God you. worked in, 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 in marvelous ways. There's one thing I can say. When you know the Lord, and you have a personal relationship with Him, and He tells you to do something, you can be sure that it's going to be successful. And that is the confidence that I've always had. That God has said, do this. And I know all I need to do is to do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. That is, that is beautiful. So from my experience, church planting in Thailand, my family didn't have the chance, my children didn't have much chance at Sabbath schools in their own language. Do your, does your family go somewhere and you go off to do this every Sabbath or what goes on? Uh, my, my family is actually very supportive, uh, my wife and my two children. Um, they're always with me. My two children were actually born in the refugee church, and they are seven and six, and they have spent all their lives in the, in the refugee church, going from one language mm. to the next. Um, very, very supportive. My wife is very involved. My son is um, very involved. My daughter is a little bit um, young to be to be involved. But God not only gives me the support of my family, but much blessing in the work that I've done. Um, you know, I could speak of of blessing of giving giving me a home. Mm. You know, I could speak of blessing at um, my job where, you know, in my school district, and I'm talking about a school district of, you know, over 72,000 students, I have the best, the highest um, scores um, mm. in my course, you know, and God has been tremendously, um, you know, gracious wow. to me. Um, in fact, just last year, I received a national award um, for being the most innovative teacher um, wow. in the country. Um, you know, God says, I will pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. Amen. It. You know, sometimes we think that if I should do church planting, I won't have time for other things and I won't be successful in other things. Actually, it's the reverse. When you do what God says, when you put God first, he says all other things 
I will give to you. Amen. Mm. Praise God. What a fantastic testimony. Thank mm. you so much for sharing, Fabian. And I want to encourage anybody who is listening to this to think deeply, to pray earnestly about church planting. Church planting among your own people or among anyone else that God puts on your heart. As you pray and look around your community and ask him who is not in the pews that is in the community, he will open up your eyes to see just the ones he is wanting to draw. And he will then lead you, as he has Fabian and his family, to those individuals that you can empower to reach out to their own people who in turn may reach out to those of their family and their tribe clear around on the other side of the world in those unreached people groups that we are waiting on for Jesus to return. May God bless you and lead you as together we reach the world ASAP.